Howdy folks, welcome to another beautiful sunny afternoon out here in West Vancouver. I'm happy to say that while I still can, I don't know how long that's going to last. Anyway, today I want to talk about something that's like, you know, freaking me out a little bit. And, uh, and that's the situation back in my home country in South Africa, the current situation with electricity and load shedding. I mean, it's starting to become absolutely ridiculous. For the past couple of weeks, South Africa has been on stage four, five or six load shedding, which means that people ha don't have power for I think, up to 12 hours a day sometimes. It's just absolutely ridiculous. You know, I speak to our employees that are still there. I speak to my parents. I speak to my family. I speak to my friends and everybody has got the same message. It is an absolute mess. We can't work. Our fridges, the food is starting to go off because the power is not on long enough for the, the fridge to cool down. What's happening is the cell phone towers, you know, cellular services are getting lost because all of these cell phone towers have got backup batteries. So even if the power goes off, the cell tower still keeps on working. But if the power goes off often enough, it means the backup batteries don't have time to recharge. And then the cell towers and the cell signals drop. So people don't have phones. People don't have alarm systems. People don't have security. People cannot work. It is an absolute nightmare. And, and that all through corruption and, you know, just stupidity from our government. Um, and I mean, look, this is not something that happened last week. This is something that's been coming for years. And that's also not something that can be fixed in a couple of months. This is something that's going to take years to fix. And it's a big issue. You know, let me just explain it to you this way. South Africa has a problem. And the problem that South Africa has is that it does not have enough money for all the people there. There's, I think, something like 55% of people live below the bread line. In other words, they are the poorest of the poor. There's not enough money in the country to support everybody. And while there's not enough money in the country, I mean, I told you that we left because of crime. Now, you know, when people are hungry, they are going to do crime. That's just the way things are. And I've always maintained that the way to save our country and to get it safe again and to make sure that it becomes a place that you can live and that you can bring up your kids and have a chance to survive is to actually bring more money into the country. So in other words, it's for because South Africa cannot generate enough cash in its own GDP to look after everybody. And one of the things that I've been preaching for a long time is to do to to become a service industry for the West. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. Currently, the rand in South Africa is something like almost 17, 90 or 18 rand to the dollar. So in other words, um, the dollar can go a lot further in South Africa than it can in the US. And South Africa has got a lot of very talented individuals, marketers, uh, writers, designers, editors, creators. We are training a lot of people. And we, the, 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 the service part of this industry has become a big business in South Africa. I mean, all our design work, our writing, a lot of the stuff for our business, we outsource back to South Africa. I mean, it's a match made in heaven because number one, we get it at a much cheaper rate or a much more affordable rate than we what we would pay over here for the same services, which allows us to actually run the business. Because um, if we were to pay the, the rates, uh, the, the US rates or the Canadian rates for design, we wouldn't be able to actually produce these books because it's just not then the, 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 the sums just doesn't make any sense. But because we can get it done in South Africa, it makes a lot of sense. So on the one hand, that's a great win. On the other hand, by using people in South Africa, we are giving jobs to South Africans. We are funneling money into South Africa, which is what the South African economy needs to actually grow and to start maybe looking after everybody and uplifting people out of the, the, the squalor and hopefully then start curbing crime and all of those awesome things, you know. So there's an opportunity 
for the country to do that and it has been doing that we've been uh, i mean in south africa the service industry to europe and the west have grown dramatically over the last couple of years you know especially with COVID, where people got used to remote teams there are so many people I know in South Africa that work for U.S. companies or European companies. And, you know, they, that's money that's being brought into the South African economy. But now, even us, I need to start rethinking if I can outsource work to South Africa. Because with the load shedding, people are just not, oh, sorry, we don't have power. We cannot get the job done. We don't have power. Our electricity is off. You know, um, and it's not their fault. I mean, it's not their fault. They're not the ones to blame for it. It's the South African government and ESCOM that is not doing what they should be doing. And they are going to start causing people that are working for Western and European companies to start losing their jobs. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. It's the last thing that the country needs, you know. The last thing that our country right now needs, that South Africa needs, is to not have power. I mean, South Africans are very resourceful. We all speak English. We're really good. We work hard. We do our best. We, we are understandable. We are, um, you know, we, 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 we good people. And the Western and, and the rest of the world actually enjoy dealing with South Africans quite often. Um, we can grow. We can bring money into the country. We can grow the economy. We can make it so much better. And I know that, um, look, there's always going to be expats that are against the country. But I know as an expat, I will funnel whatever work I can back to South Africa because I still love South Africa. Although Canada is my new country, I am now Canadian, but my family is there, my friends are there, I know so many people over there. I mean, I don't, I don't hate South Africa, I would funnel work and I would try and help where I can, but they are really making it hard. They're really making it hard and the poor people of South Africa are struggling. They, I mean, it is so absurd. People, um, man, my sister lives in, in Joburg, you know, her geezer blew because of the power going off three or four times a day, switching off, on, off, on, off, on. It doesn't work very well. You know, now what happens apparently, according to the plumber with the geezer is, if your geezer is empty and the power switches off or switches on and then the element is... Uh, 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 Hot, it blows, but that's the other problem. Apparently there's huge water problems as well where they are in Joburg. The water goes off regularly, then there's no water. Um, you know, so <sighs> electronic devices are breaking. Freezers, fridges, foods going off. People can't do work. Um, even the shops, there's just so many of the shops that are absolutely... Um, <laughs> It's actually sad, you know, some of the shops and they have to close their doors for four hours from like 12 p.m. till 4 p.m. because, you know, the electricity is off. And yes, you can say people can install generators and run generators, but at the current cost of fuel, it's costing a damn fortune. I mean, I was speaking to um, our uh, accountant who's also in South Africa and he was saying that just to run his generator costs him an extra 5,000 rand a month just in fuel. And just during the periods when the power is off, but the power is off so often, it is like, it's ridiculous. And you know what the funny thing is? It's like he says, you know, this month we've, we haven't had power for almost half the month. It's like, I mean, it is like a lot of time that we are without electricity. Yet our electricity bill comes and it's still the same as the previous month. You know, it's, it's not like, okay, well, we didn't give you power this month. So suddenly your bill is a lot lower. No, apparently it doesn't work like that. You still pay. And now, of course, South Africa has come up or some people in, in ESCOM and the, the power utility and the government there has come up with the idea because obviously the people with money what do they do they go and install solar panels or giant generators and they take care of themselves they take themselves off the grid now the government's coming back and saying hey we think we should start taxing people that are using solar power and uh, their own generators so um, because you know they are not 
<laughs> they're not contributing to the grid, so they should be taxed extra. It's like, it's mind-blowing. The, the, the stupidity of some of these people out there, it's just, uh, I don't know. Anyway, sorry about the rant today. It's just sad when I speak to people and I have to listen to what's going on. And it's just going on unchecked, you know. I have people coming back to me. I, I, I was, I think one of my other videos I was talking about, you know, the free medical and the free everything. And, and somebody came back and said, hey, it's not free. You're paying taxes for it. Yes, I'm paying taxes for it. But you know what? I'm getting it. In South Africa, people are paying taxes, yet they are not getting anything. You know, they still have to pay medical. They still have to pay for schooling. They still have to pay for anything if they want anything decent. And then, of course, you know, electricity now already being ESCOM switching off the power all the time. Now they are asking for a 34% price increase in electricity so that they can... Um, try and, 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 and fix the power stations. I mean, it's absolutely stupid. Actually, <laughs> funny story. Uh, I think it was 2015, I was at a braai in South Africa and I met a dude. He was from, uh, what's the company called? I can't remember. One of these big guys that make the big electric motors and the big electric stuff, international company. And they were installing the 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 furnaces or the fans or the, the 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 reactors for the three new or two of the three new coal power plants that south africa was building at that time like with you know they spent billions and billions and billions on these three new coal power plants that was going to like take south africa and make sure that we've got electricity forever and we were at this braai and I was chatting to this guy and after a couple of brandies, the guy started telling me, he's like, dude, this is the biggest disaster you've ever seen because they are buying the specific units to install in these coal power plants. And it's not the right unit because the quality of coal that you have to put through that unit has to be perfect and the coal that you guys have here are not the exactly the right quality he's like those things are never going to last and we've told it to the government we've told it to escom we explained it to them and they are just like no put it in those are the ones we want and that was what this guy was i think it was 2014 december or 2015 somewhere around there i mean we're talking about years ago so this is not a new problem. This is an old problem. There's, through all the years, there's just been so much corruption in South Africa. It is absolutely ridiculous, especially in ESCOM. Because ESCOM is the South African Utility electric, Electrical Supplier. And it has, it's a parastatal, it's a part government organization. And it has absolutely no competition. So in other words, they do as they please. Um, and nobody, you're not, until recently, you weren't even really allowed. You can't, I can't put up a big solar panel on my roof and supply electricity to my neighbor if he's out because that's against the law. Everything was, um, yeah, anyway. All right, folks, I'm sorry. This is a different one today, but it is actually sad. And, and you know, it's something that I care about. Anyway, you almost have a good one. Cheers.